Hey everyone, just wanted to make a quick video talking to you guys about the holiday. A lot of you are probably wondering what you should do whenever you sit at that table for Thanksgiving, especially with what happened recently with the election. Of course, some of you are blessed to live in a family where all of you did vote for Donald Trump, or at least you all lean conservative, so even if someone in your family didn't vote for Trump, he's still happy that he won. But that's probably pretty rare. At this point, you for sure have a cousin or an aunt, or if you're an older person, a nephew or a son who is very, very political. They're an activist. They probably held up a big Palestine flag on their college campus uh, if they were young, and if they were older, they probably changed their profile picture on Facebook to a Ukrainian flag. And having to go and sit with these people can feel like a chore. What advice would I give to you? Well, I think it's very important for people, and I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here, someone that I really like, Pastor Joel Webbin of Texas, talks about how important it is for Christians, and I would say Christians, but also us, also all political thinkers, to think in categories. That is a very important thing to remember. So you can be hardcore conservative. You can be very much a man of the right, reading Spengler and Yaki and Schmidt. But you have to be able to think in categories. And then the other thing that I think, if I had an old mentor... In many ways, the reason I'm a primitive Baptist today is because of his spiritual leadership and his life advice he gave me. But he would say, you need to ask yourself whenever something needs to be said that's kind of awkward. First, does it need to be said? Second, does it need to be said now? And third, does it need to be said by me? My mom would say, is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? Now, you and I, and this, uh, the question of, is it true? Yeah, it's going to be true. So whenever it comes to the part, is it kind, we need to think about that. Because that, that can be really hard. If you're not able to say it in a kind way, you might want to just not say it at all. And then thirdly, is it necessary? This is kind of what my old mentor would say. Does it need to be said by me? In other words, does it need to be said now by me, or is it necessary to say it now? Now, I will assure you that you can find other things to talk about on Thanksgiving. In many cases, these are people that you haven't seen in months, possibly years, depending on if they weren't able to come to the last Thanksgiving. And so I want you guys to just keep that in mind, that there are sort of things you can talk about. So I would, I would change the subject. And again, back to thinking in categories, you can find kindred spirits and talk to kindred spirits about political theory or about current events in ways that are not damaging. Even if this person doesn't always agree with you, you know that you and this other person can do it civilly. When it comes to talking to family, it's different because these are people related to you by blood. And you, for better or for worse, pretty much have to see them for the rest of your life. There's some exceptions where, you know, someone's an alcoholic and they're basically kicked out of the family or a drug addict or some other bad situation like that. But in a, most situations, you're going to see these people regularly for the rest of your life. And I will add, that's not a bad thing. Having ties to your family is good. You need to have relationships with people different than yourself. That's a good thing. All your relationships should not be based on politics. You should have relationships also based on other things, whether it be movies you like, TV shows you like, books you like, other interests. It could be hobbies. It could be, you know, if you're a guy, you like woodworking or working on cars or something. If you're a girl, any number of things. I'm not a woman, so I don't know. But it's it can be very hard because a lot of you probably want to come to your family the same way you would to your buddy. And just talk about politics and have and have what you think is a very civil dialogue. Unfortunately, 
on the left, and this is why it's an exception to have a buddy of yours who's able to talk to you about politics who disagrees with you, it's getting harder and harder to have a civil discourse with the left to the point that it's almost better to not talk to the left, anyone on the left, about politics at all unless it's a recorded or a live streamed or a t televised debate. Because then you're not really arguing with that person. You kind of are, but you're actually persuading an audience. And that's a very different goal. If you read the book, and I don't have it nearby, there's a book called The Art of the Argument by Stefan Molyneux. The guy's not right about everything, but that book is pretty spot on. And he talks about if you're going to make a good argument, it's like cooking a seven course meal. Don't give it to someone who's just going to take it and throw it away. And that's what you kind of do when you're arguing with a sophist, someone who engages in bad faith argumentation, who doesn't know how to argue, things like that. So my big resounding point here is avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. I would, when it comes to family, I will be doing my best to avoid politics. Because there are people in my family who don't agree with me. And I'm fine with that. There were times, there was a time when I was a younger man that I really wanted to help them see reason. I really wanted to convert them, so to speak. And in many cases, that's just not possible. I'll put it this way. Only talk to people in your family about politics. This is generally speaking. If you see any openness, if you don't see any openness, don't even bother. And I would especially argue for Thanksgiving and Christmas, don't argue, don't even try, don't attempt. Now, with that being said, there are activists that are super activists who will not leave you alone. They will harass, 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 and get their feelings hurt if you don't talk to them about politics. So what I would do in that situation, if you are trying to change the subject and this person keeps coming back to politics, and I don't mean like they're... They're content to just hear themselves talk. That's not what I'm talking about. Because if they're content to hear themselves talk, I would probably just do a little bit of smiling and nodding and just let them keep talking for a little while and then do my best to reroute the subject again and just keep doing it. That's that's the only thing I could think of to do, to tell you. But if the person is saying to you, what do you think? Or if they're saying in this situation, because we just had a presidential election, who did you vote for? And you're trying to avoid it and dodge it. And then they keep coming back to you, well, who did you vote for? And then they start getting their feelings hurt. Oh, you won't tell me who you voted for and it really hurts my feelings, yada, yada, yada. And that kind of a situation where your liberal cousin or your aunt is just driving you crazy and will not catch the hint, will not take the hint, then keep your answers very short and to the point and kind. I think you can be very frank and clear, but also very kind. And that's, that's what I would do. So what, what would I mean? What do I mean by that? I voted for Donald Trump because it is in my view that the southern border situation has been out of control. I would like that to stop. Also, he put out a message saying he is pro-business. And you can see that by the number of people who pitched in his campaign that are businessmen. I wanted gas prices to go down, inflation to get better. I'm trying to afford a house or, or rent as it may be. I would like to see all of these things get better. And if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were capable of fixing this, they would have. And I think you can probably just leave it right there. And then if they say anything or start attacking you, I would say, you know, you have that viewpoint and that's fine. I, I respect you. I love you because this is a person in your family. I love you. Uh, but how about this? You can see it that way and I can see it my way. And that's all right. You and I are family. I'm always going to love you. You're a member of my family. And you and I can see this differently. And then maybe say gently, you know, this is one of the reasons why I mentioned the football game or Susie, your daughter, or uh, how school going in college rather than going to you about politics because I know that we're different and I don't want to sit here on Thanksgiving day and argue about politics the whole time with you. Unfortunately, there's a lot of that around our country. And so can we talk about something else that would really mean a lot to me? And if anyone 
if you say that sincerely and anyone gets mad at you about that, then that's their problem because you were civil and you tried to de-escalate and you tried to be positive and you expressed love, but you also respected them enough to tell them because they were insisting upon it, tell them what you thought. But again, I would only say any of that if and only if they will not leave you alone. Otherwise, I would avoid politics completely with your liberal family members.